A Farewell to Arms Book Summary By Audiobook Academy A Farewell to Arms is a novel set in Italy during World War I by famed American author Ernest Hemingway. The novel was first published in Scribner's magazine from May to October 1929 with a print run of 31,000 copies, and it was quickly picked up by other publishers. Hemingway's best-known novel as well as a source of financial independence, The Old Man on the Sea was an immediate success. Frederick Henry, an American ambulance driver fighting in the Italian army during World War I, is the focus of this tale. Henry meets Catherine Barclay, an English nurse, and starts to woo her. Henry suffers a shrapnel injury to the knee during fighting and is evacuated to a hospital in Milan to recover. Unable to accept the length of time it will take him to heal, he seeks out the assistance of Dr. Valentini, an unconventional surgeon who agrees to perform an immediate operation. As she cares for him in Milan, Catherine begins to fall in love with him. Once Henry has recovered completely, he will be taken back to the Italian front in his ambulance with the rest of the troops. However, he arrives at a time when the Allied troops are on the verge of defeat. To get to Milan on a train, Henry had to flee the fighting by jumping into a river and swimming downstream. Henry and Catherine are reunited and flee to Switzerland together. Henry thinks he's done with his military duties, but a tragic event soon brings the happy couple to their knees. Summary Lieutenant Frederick Henry, the book's narrator, tells the story in the first person. Henry begins by telling us about his hometown in Italy, a little community of about 2,000 people. Troops from World War I frequently passed by the home and along the road in the dust they generated powdered the leaves of the trees during the late summer. According to him, any fast-moving vehicle must have been transporting the king, who conducts daily trips to the front lines to assess the situation. Catherine Barclay, a lovely young woman that Henry's friend Rinaldi, a lieutenant and surgeon, has fallen in love with. In order to fool Catherine into thinking that Henry is a wealthy guy, Henry offers to lend Rinaldi some money. Upon first meeting Catherine, Henry is awestruck by the beauty of her long blonde hair. While Rinaldi is occupied conversing with another nurse, Henry learns that Catherine has recently lost a fiancé on the battlefield. When she inquires about his romantic history, he replies that he has never been in love. Rinaldi makes fun of Catherine's preference for Henry as they drive home. Henry visits Catherine the following day. He discovers her in the garden and they begin a conversation, agreeing not to discuss the war. Catherine slaps Henry when he tries to kiss her, and he eventually gives in and kisses her. Henry observes that they have now stopped worrying about the war as a result of this incident. We're going to have a bizarre existence, Catherine sobs after Henry kisses her and she lets him kiss her. Although Henry is aware that he is not in love with Catherine, he and Catherine begin to see each other on a regular basis. A seductive game has him convinced he's being played. Henry assures Catherine that he is only going for a performance and that she need not be concerned when she learns that he has been sent to confront a raid in Pavla. A medal representing St. Anthony is given to him by Catherine in order to protect him. After a blinding flash and heat like a furnace, Henry sees Pavla being bombed, which causes him to panic. He was enjoying dinner in the dining hall when a trench mortar detonated. As a result of his injuries, Henry believes he is about to die. Rinaldi pays a visit to Henry as he is recovering in the hospital and informs him that he will be awarded a medal for his bravery in combat. Henry is overjoyed. Henry argues, insisting he did nothing courageous, but Rinaldi won't accept Henry's denial. Rinaldi also informs Henry that the United States has formally declared war on Germany, and that President Wilson would do the same with regard to Austria shortly after. To aid Henry's recovery, he'll be taken to a hospital in Milan. A visit from Catherine, who was recently assigned to work at the same hospital, has him all giddy. After arriving at the hospital, Henry immediately develops a disliking for the ward's superintendent Miss Van Campen. Henry goes around her and asks for a porter to bring him several bottles of wine and the evening newspaper when she denies him alcohol with his meals. Catherine's first day at Henry's school is the following day. When she enters the room, he discovers that he is infatuated with her and entices her to join him in bed. For the first time, the two engage in passionate physical contact. Later, Henry learns from his doctors that removing the shrapnel from his knee will require him to wait six months. Dr. Valentini, a brusque and cheery physician, provides Henry with a second opinion because he is concerned that the procedure will take so long. In the morning, Henry's operation will be carried out by the doctor who had a drink with him. Immediately following the operation, Henry falls ill and is unable to speak with Catherine verbally. He asks the other nurse, Helen, groggily if she'll be at his and Catherine's wedding, and she responds sarcastically that she doesn't believe there will be a wedding. Henry begins to learn how to use crutches during the summer. All night long, he and Catherine talk marriage. Despite Catherine's reluctance to get married, 
she tells the story of how her family would be devastated if she did. However, she promises to remain loyal to Henry. Henry's leg will be nearly healed by September. He is given three weeks of recuperation leave, following which he must return to the front lines of battle. He learns from a British major who is also in the hospital that the Allied forces had been badly beaten up. Despite the Allies' certain defeat, the major tells Henry that if no one notices, everything would be all right. When Catherine reveals to Henry that she is pregnant, she is concerned that he will perceive her as a conniving woman. His words of comfort to her are simple, I love you, and I can't wait to have a baby with you. They must be courageous and the coward dies a thousand deaths, the brave simply won, he says. Henry becomes ill the following morning and is eventually diagnosed with jaundice. Miss Van Campen accuses him of deliberately making himself ill in order to avoid being sent back to the front lines because of his drunkenness. Denying him convalescent leave is the result of a report she filed. After learning that Henry is returning to the war earlier than previously expected, Catherine's reaction was understandable. Before they go, they go out to eat and eventually discover a wonderful hotel where they can stay the night. Catherine reveals that she feels like a prostitute despite the luxurious hotel and the fancy nightgown she buys for the rendezvous. Asked how she plans on taking care of the newborn, she assures Henry that she has everything under control and that her house would be ready for him when he returns. Henry is sent back to Gorizia, the town where he was injured. Because of his injuries, he soon discovers that the summer was a very dangerous time for the conflict. Rinaldi asks Henry about Catherine and whether or not they've been married when Henry and Rinaldi are reunited. Henry is offended when he inquires about Catherine's sex life, which he regards as rude. Rinaldi, apologizing, suggests that they toast Catherine and go out to dinner as a show of respect. Henry heads to Bainst's, a particularly hard-hit area of the country, the next day. Gino, an Austrian he meets along the way, tells him a scary story about the Austrians' firearms. Henry is informed by Gino that if the Austrian army decides to strike, they will have nowhere to retreat to. The following night, there is yet another round of shelling. Henry's troops realize in the morning that the Germans were responsible for the attack, and they are frightened by what this means for them. This is the first time the Germans have conducted airstrikes in the area. Eventually, they'll be instructed to go back. As they go, Henry learns that Rinaldi and the rest of the Bainz's hospital staff have already departed for the hospital. Henry, Pinello, Piani, and Amo, three other drivers, take a break and eat before entering the retreat. A large line of fleeing automobiles joins the men as they make their way slowly out of town. It comes to a standstill at some time. Henry gets out of his car to see how his friends are doing. He discovers Bonello and Amo in his car, as well as two engineering officers and two young women. Henry returns to Piani's automobile after assuring the young women that Amo will bring them out of the city and to safety. Every night, he has visions of Catherine, as if he is talking to her in his sleep. In the early hours of the following morning, Henry and his men, tired of being cooped up in the retreating column of automobiles all night, decide to take a tiny route heading north, in the hope that it will expedite their exit from town. Because Amo's automobile got stuck in the mud, they had to chop bush off the roadside and place it under Amo's tires in an attempt to get the vehicle moving again. Henry instructs the two engineering students to help, but they refuse out of fear of being overtaken by the enemy. Henry pulls a revolver on them and kills one of them as they flee. In spite of their fear, they both make it out unscathed. To no effect, the men then attempt to extricate the stuck car with the help of twigs, limbs, and even clothing. The vehicle is still immobilized. They are now able to fit everyone into the remaining two automobiles and resume their journey. However, they quickly find themselves in the same situation again. The two young women are given some money by Henry and sent to a neighboring village. In the end, he and his comrades decide to walk the remainder of the way. The men soon come across a German bicycle regiment. The men decide to take a different route to evade the heavily armed army. They are being fired upon as they begin to down an embankment. Shots are fired at Amo, killing him instantly. Henry and his soldiers quickly learn that the Italian rear guard accidentally shot and killed Amo because they were frightened by the presence of German troops in the vicinity. Henry and his men have come to the realization that facing the enemy is less dangerous than facing their own people. They've made the decision to hide out in an abandoned farmhouse until it's safe to come out. As Piani and Bonello head out in quest of food, Henry stays put in the hayloft. When Piani returns, he tells the story of Bonello's departure from the farm, hoping to be captured and imprisoned so that he could avoid certain death. Both Piani and Henry stay in the barn during the day before heading out to meet up with the rest of their gang by night. 
a group of soldiers is being divided up and interrogated over alleged treason that contributed to the defeat of the Italians, and they eventually find themselves in this situation. The men should not be able to question officials in this manner, Henry argues. Two soldiers grab him and restrain him, believing him to be belligerent. Seeing a lieutenant colonel being carried away and executed for deserting his troops, he cries out in pain. To escape capture, Henry dives into a nearby river as his other soldiers are focused on the tragedy they have just witnessed. After hearing shots being fired over his head, he begins to swim downriver. Henry lets himself be swept along with the current for what feels like an eternity. He eventually makes his way out, takes off his star-studded clothing, and boards a military train that evening. Gun-laden carriages on the train make Henry's hiding spot difficult to find, so Henry shelters under canvas tarps. Henry contemplates his upcoming reunion with Catherine and how, without men or an army to return to, he considers the war and his time as a soldier served to be virtually finished. Henry and Catherine board the train together. Not my show anymore, he muses, as the realization dawns on him. In Milan, Henry arrives at Catherine's hospital only to discover that she has been transferred to Stressa. He travels to see Ralph Simmons, an old buddy, to get information on how to go to Switzerland. Simmons is willing to assist in any way he can, even if it means providing Henry with some civilian clothing. Henry soon arrives in Stressa, where he finds Catherine and Helen Ferguson in her hotel. Helen, on the other hand, is enraged and accuses Henry of ruining the lives of her friend, Catherine, who is happy to see him. Helen begins to cry as a result of the lack of response she receives from Catherine and Henry. After spending the night together, Henry promises Catherine that if he ever gets his thoughts straight about why he left his employment, he will tell her. Upon meeting him, Catherine is overjoyed and assures him that he is not a criminal for having left the war before it was completed. Each of them has made up their minds that they want to go to Switzerland. Following their lunch with Helen, they receive forgiveness and a very joyful response. She was merely jealous of their affection for each other, Henry concludes. Henry learns that the military police have tracked him down and plan to arrest him in the morning. He learns this the night before. That night, he and Catherine make plans to row to Switzerland. Henry rode through the night until his hands were sore, but the couple arrived in Switzerland in the morning. There, they are brought to Locarno, where they are given provisional visas so that they can stay in Switzerland. After a long day of traveling, the exhausted couple takes a rest at a motel. Over the course of a few months, Henry and Catherine relocate into a property near Montreux, where the book's end takes place. They have a great relationship, and Catherine is becoming bigger and bigger with each passing day. Catherine agrees to marry someday but prefers to put it off until the future and talk about other topics instead of putting it off any longer. Because Catherine has a narrow pelvis, the doctors have warned her that childbirth may be difficult. Catherine is soon on her way to the hospital, where she gives birth. Catherine wants Henry to go out to breakfast since she believes she has a long time before the baby arrives. In response, he finds Catherine already in the delivery room when he returns. He finds her in excruciating pain when he arrives in the delivery room. They've been advised by doctors that a cesarean section is their best option. They wheel Catherine out while Henry stands on the sidewalk and watches. Soon, the doctor will be back with a baby boy in tow. When Henry notices that he doesn't seem to care for the child, he heads straight to Catherine. Henry assures her that their son is doing okay when she inquires about him. Their conversation is interrupted by Catherine's nurse, who heads to the hall to speak with Henry. In the womb, the umbilical cord strangled their kid and he was born stillborn. Catherine is hemorrhaging when Henry returns from supper, the nurse tells him. In a state of panic, he begs to see her because he fears she may die. Then she asks him not to tell any other girls about the things he once said to her. Henry nods his head in agreement, and soon after, Catherine passes away. He can't say goodbye to her when she dies, so he exits the hospital and wanders out into the rain to say his final goodbye to her. Characters Lieutenant Frederick Henry, the lead character of the novel and the narrator of the story. After joining the Italian army during World War I, Henry is a modest guy who feels his job as an officer should not be recognized with medals or accolades since he believes it is his duty. It is Henry's habit to detach himself from ideals like patriotism, honor, and faith, and he reaffirms this via his talks with individuals in the conflict. Henry only cares about cold, harsh facts, such as how many days are left until the next onslaught. It's not until Henry meets Catherine Barclay that he finds real passion in his life and he falls in love with her before he realizes it. Without realizing it at first, he finds in Catherine more than just a one-night stand, she turns out to be the person who finally allows him to open up and disclose his deepest worries and insecurities. Henry has numerous friends, 
but Catherine is the only one he actually cares about in the narrative. At the end, it becomes clear that he has no feelings for their child. A book written after Henry's death allows him to share details about Catherine he had forgotten until now, making her parts in the novel seem like a heartfelt eulogy. Catherine Barclay, she perhaps is not the strongest female character in the literary world. At the beginning of the tale, she is a nurse who eventually falls in love and marries a man she doesn't particularly like, only to quit her work and have a kid with him in a foreign nation. In an almost impossible way, Catherine manages to be both lovely and uncomplicated at the same time. When Henry returns from the battlefield, she appears in the narrative just to wait for him to interact with her. In spite of this, Catherine is depicted at times as an intellectual and sophisticated persona. Despite her initial misgivings, she eventually comes to terms with the fact that Henry is only interested in seducing her, and she tells him as much, ordering him to go home when she has had enough of him. She refuses to be married until the very end, and while we don't know why, it's not out of the question to speculate that her reluctance is linked to the death of her fiancé at the beginning of the book. In the end, Catherine's death represents Henry's last cause for living and dying, as well as the cost of his crime of deserting the field of combat. Rinaldi, a surgeon in the Italian army and the close friend of Henry. At first, Rinaldi is a ladies' man who pursues Catherine, but he isn't too arrogant to back off when he realizes how important Henry is to her. Rinaldi is a jovial character who makes it a point to try to cheer up Henry whenever he can. Henry has no ill feelings toward him despite the fact that he fled Bainz before the Germans had a chance to seize the city. Helen Ferguson, a nurse who works at the American hospital with Catherine. She cares deeply about Catherine's well-being and reputation as a friend. When Catherine falls pregnant out of wedlock, she changes her mind about Henry. In the end, Henry and Catherine conclude that Helen is jealous of their love and anxious about her own lack of marriage prospects, and seem to ignore her after that. Miss Van Campen, the superintendent nurse of the American hospital where Catherine works. Henry has an instant aversion to Miss Van Campen due to her severe and chilly demeanor. Even though she is one of the few ladies in the book who can see through his charms and recognize that he is an alcoholic the relationship between Henry and Miss Van Campen doesn't improve even when he's discharged from the hospital and she eventually refuses his convalescence leave because she suspects he's lying about his illness. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this, see you in next video.